Hello and welcome back to our study of Penine Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Eliezer Melamed. We are continuing our study of Bedikas Chametz, and here's a question that comes up fairly often, and it's probably something that while you're conducting the search, you wonder each and every year, and it's simply, I've cleaned the whole house for Pesach. Now, we always say that Pesach cleaning is not spring cleaning. We have to know what is required, what is not. But we have made sure that there is no chametz for weeks leading up to Pesach. There's no chametz in this room. No food's allowed to be in the living room, etc., etc., etc. We've gone through the couches. So what is really the point of Badika if, if I know that I've already cleaned out my whole house? And this is a very practical shalah that the Rav addresses. Semen ches. Ha'im somchen ala niko Pesach. In most Jewish homes, of course, the custom is that we clean the house before Pesach quite well. And he quotes from the Shari Truva and others that if a place that was cleaned and we know for sure that chametz has been removed and that there was no chametz brought in any time afterwards, it does not need such a precise check. However, there are others that are very strict in this. And according to this reasoning, the fact that you have cleaned the house already doesn't change anything. That the rabbis instituted that we have to perform a search on the night of the 14th and all the nooks and the crannies, the cracks, that's the language of the Gemara, and those who are very strict in this, they rely on the fact that there is not enough done with the cleaning, because since even though you may have cleaned leading up to this point, but when you're not looking with a candle at night, it's possible you could have missed things. Because only through candlelight, a way we would say is actually, I would say you could use a, a powerful light at night, using the contrast of night, but only through this type of searching would you be able to find things that are in the cracks, which you may not see in the daytime, as we learned last time. Aval, Lamaisa Hamenig Lahakel, he says, practically speaking, though, our custom is to be lenient. We know there's someone that has been very well cleaned for Pesach. We do what we would call a perfunctory search. And this makes sense. Because after you have cleaned a room accordingly, quite fittingly, and you have also made careful, been very careful not to bring any more chametz. I mean, I recall as a child growing up that when there was already a room that was clean for Pesach, before you could even walk in, you had to kind of shake yourself off, make sure there were no crumbs, make sure you didn't bring anything from the kitchen, etc., but if that's the case, so once a room is clean and we are certain that no more chametz is being brought inside there, then we consider this what the Gemara calls a place where chametz does not normally enter. And then from the technical point of the law, it actually does not require a checking. And you'll say, ah, but I'm searching and it's in the daytime and it's not with a candle and it's not the same. A good cleaning is probably going to be more thorough than your actual searching. Lamashal. Keshemanakin Aron. So he gives an example. Let's say you clean a closet or a shelf. Let's say you take a closet apart. You take everything off. You wipe off the shelves. And you're pretty certain that there's not even a, a, an ounce of chametz in there at all. And the chances of finding any chametz there are going to be so, so slim, certainly even if you would have a candlelight on the 14th. Nevertheless, even though we have cleaned the house quite well, now this doesn't mean that we don't have to do a search at all. We still have to do a search. We have to do a search on the night of the 14th, and we have to do a search with a bracha and with a candle or a powerful light. First of all, we're still eating up until the 14th, and we're eating chametz, so we have to certainly check those areas. It's possible that maybe we forgot a certain area. Maybe we forgot a closet. Maybe we forgot a shelf that there might be chametz. 
we have a very distinct memory in our household that during Badika's Hametz one year, and everybody says, oh, it doesn't really matter. The house is clean. Well, I found once under one of the children's beds an entire waffle, an ego waffle. I kid you not. And therefore, that just only solidified for me the need for Badika's Hametz. That's my story, not Rab Malamet, by the way. For the chayin, chayavim b'vdikas chametz la'avor es kol habayis vadav shachin kol amal koamos no kohetev. He says, therefore, we have to do chametz. We have to do b'vdikas chametz on the entire house, even though the whole house is clean. V'imzeh shabodik lo yistatif ba'atma benikui. And if the cl- the one who's doing the searching, if he wasn't involved in the actual cleaning, yavakesh me'elu shenikus shiamdu liado b'vdika. He should ask those who clean to maybe stand with him during the bedika, during the search. And he should say, well, was this clean well? Was this clean well? They can go over each and every spot. Or maybe they could put little signs, put a sticky note, and saying, this was clean well, this was clean well, so there's no need to really spend a lot of time here. And then you could do a simpler, more perfunctory bedika in those places. Omnam. But that doesn't mean that we just kind of zip through and that's it. The bedikah should take a fair amount of time, depending on the size of your home. But you still have to do the check on every single corner, every area of the room, and all the walls, and between all their furniture. And you have to go into each place where you might find chametz during the year. My favorite is to go through the pockets of the coats, because when we're cleaning our homes, people forget to clean the jacket pockets, the coat pockets, you find the the gum and the candy and whatever fun stuff, the backpacks of the children, things like that. We have to make sure that they were indeed clean, and if not, you may be surprised what you find. And this takes some time. And again, we, we, know, we know that if something was already clean, uh, we could do a more perfunctory search. We'll discuss next time the efficacy of using the 10 pieces of bread, which, of course, is a custom aminag and klal Yisrael. But the notion of searching, just again, it's probably a question that you've had over time, is that if I've already cleaned the house, why do I need to search for chametz? The answer is, is that Chazal instituted we have to do a search with a candle, and even though your thing is cleaned well, your homes, your aronot, your closets, your shelves, your bedrooms, whatever it might be that there's chametz, nevertheless, we still have to check because maybe you forgot or maybe um, there's something that you missed. Also, just as a side note, that you're only required to check places where you normally bring chametz. If there's a place where, let's say, you never eat, <clears throat> there's never food allowed in there, like, I don't know, my car, uh, or let's say people, you know, a lot of people growing up, a lot of people had a room in the house that they didn't use. You know, like the carpet was always fanned out and vacuumed a certain way and the couches were covered. If you lived in a home like this, then, and, and there was never food brought in, then there's actually no need to even consider cleaning in there or even maybe even doing badika if you know that there has never been food brought inside. Uh, whatever the case might be in your particular situation, but you have to know that even though you have cleaned the house well, badika is still required with a bracha. And we'll, we'll see next time the custom about putting out the 10 pieces of bread. And we thank everybody for listening as we get closer and closer to Chag Pesach. Hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you again here next time.